I think people don't understand the coal power plants, because of their emissions, they cause a certain number of deaths every year, far more dangerous than nuclear power plants. I would say this is a national security risk. It's not, listen, playtime is over, okay? Obviously, playtime is over. It's a national security risk to shut these things down. We've essentially designed civilization to be super sensitive to climate change. The important thing to appreciate is that we are going to exit the fossil fuels era. It is inevitable that we will exit the fossil fuels era because at a certain point we will simply run out of uh, carbon to mine and burn. So the question is really, when do we exit the era, not if? The goal is to exit the era as quickly as possible. Given that oil and even coal are, are a finite resource, it doesn't seem to make sense that we would run that experiment when we have to get off them anyway, because they're simply finite very terrible situation. But he also said it's not like there's no good that comes out of even a terrible yeah. situation. There's some good that comes out of it, but it's overwhelmingly bad. It's just really interesting to read about history, learn the lessons of history, such that we do not repeat mistakes of the past. That means we need to move from the old goal, uh, with the pre-industrial goal, goal, which was to move from chopping down forests and killing lots of whales. That, the old goal was to move from chopping wood and, and killing whales to uh, fossil fuels, which actually, in that context, was a good thing. But the new goal is to move to a, a sustainable energy future. And we want to use things like hydro, solar, wind, geothermal. Nuclear is also a, a good option in um, places like France, which don't, aren't subject to natural disasters. And, and we want to use energy sources that will be good for, for a billion years. So you need solar batteries is, will be the main long-term way that civilization is powered. but between now and then, we need to maintain nuclear. I can't emphasize enough, please do not shut down the nuclear power plants and please re reopen the ones that have been shut. This is total madness to shut them down. I want to be clear. And I think we just want to take the set of actions that accelerate the transition to a sustainable energy economy. And that sustainable energy economy is going to be, like I said, primarily solar with wind. You, you absolutely need stationary storage batteries because of the intimacy of solar and wind. And then then there will also be hydroelectric, geothermal, nuclear. These are all fine. And the common, but we want to just move as quickly as we can to a sort of a solar electric economy. And sometimes people say, oh, it's cloudy or something. What about solar and do plants grow? They're a solar powered chemical reaction. If plants grow, you have solar power, obviously. <laughs> How do you think they grow? So th there's a certain amount of carbon that is circulating through the environment. So it's going into the air, being absorbed by and then getting absorbed by plants and animals, um, and then going back into the air. And this, this carbon is just circulating on the surface. Um, and this, this is fine, and it's been doing that for hundreds of millions of years. The thing that's changed is that we've added something to the mix. Billions of tons of carbon that's been buried for hundreds of millions of years um, and is not part of the carbon cycle, taking it from deep underground and adding it to the carbon cycle. Carbon parts per million has really been bouncing around the 300 level for around 10 million years. Um, and then in the last few hundred years, it went into a vertical climb. This, this is the, the essence of the problem. This is very unusual um, and a very, very extreme threat, as you can see from this rate of growth. Then this is accompanied by uh, a temperature increase, as one would expect. I like to, I believe in the scientific method and one should be, one should have a healthy skepticism of things in general. And what, what do you think the percentage chance is of, of this being catastrophic for some meaningful percentage of the Earth's population. Um, is it greater than 1%? Is it even 1%? Um, if it is even 1%, why are we running this experiment? Yeah. We're playing Russian roulette, and as each year goes by, we're loading more rounds in the chamber. Mm -hmm. It's not wise. Small changes result in, in huge effects. The sensitivity of the climate is extremely, extremely high. You know, what we're doing right now, which is mining and burning trillions of tons of hydrocarbons that used to be buried very deep underground, and now we're sticking them in the atmosphere and running this crazy chemical experiment on the atmosphere. And then you've got the oil and gas companies which have ungodly amounts of money. And you can't expect them to just roll over and die. Like, they don't do that. But the momentum towards sustainable energy is too slow. There's a vast base of industry, vast transportation system. Like, there's two and a half billion cars and trucks in the world. The new car and truck production, if it was 100% electric, that's only about 100 million per year. So it would take, if you could snap your fingers and inst instantly turn all cars and trucks electric, it would still take 25 years to change the transport base to electric. 
Well, the, the thing that is going on right now is that there is a, an inherent subsidy in any oil burning device. Any, any power plant or car is fundamentally uh, consuming the carbon capacity of the oceans and atmosphere. Well, it depends on, on when and how many trillions of CO2 get pumped into the atmosphere. Yeah. There's no question that at a certain level, uh, it will destroy the Earth or destroy large portions mm -hmm. of the Earth. Um, the question is just what is that level and how soon do, do, we, do we stop pumping vast quantities of CO2 into the atmosphere? So, so that's, and, and, and what makes it super insane is that we're going to run out of oil anyway. <laughs> like, it's not like there's some infinite oil supply. We're going to run out of it. So we know we have to get to a sustainable means of, of, of transportation no matter what. So why even run the experiment? Bad happening past a certain carbon concentration in the, in the atmosphere. And so there's some uncertain number where if we put too much carbon in the atmosphere, things overheat, oceans warm up, ice caps melt, we will have quite a serious climate risk that we're facing. There's fundamentally a subsidy occurring with every fossil fuel burning thing, power plants, aircraft, car, frankly, even rockets. I mean, rockets use up, you know, they burn, they burn fuel. But there's just, you know, with rockets, there's just no other way to, to get to orbit, unfortunately. So it's the only way. But with cars, there's definitely a better way with electric cars. And to generate the energy, do so with photovoltaics, because we've got a giant thermonuclear reactor in the sky called the sun. It's great, it sort of shows up every day, very reliable. So if you can generate energy from solar panels, store it with batteries, you can have energy 24 hours a day. You know, it's, it's important that we accelerate the transition to sustainable energy. That's why electric cars, it matters whether electric cars happen sooner or later. You know, we're, we're really playing a crazy game here with the atmosphere and the yeah. oceans. We're taking vast amounts of carbon from deep underground, putting this in the, in the, in the atmosphere. This is crazy. We should not do this. It's very dangerous. Sustainable energy will happen no matter what. If there was no Tesla, Tesla never, never existed, it, it would have to happen out of necessity. It's tautological. If you don't have sustainable energy, it means you have unsustainable energy. Eventually you'll run out. The uh, laws of economics will drive, uh, will drive civilization towards sustainable energy, inevitably. People tend to think like, why should electric vehicles have a subsidy? But they're not taking into account that all fossil fuel burning vehicles fundamentally are subsidized by the cost, the environmental cost to Earth. But nobody's paying for it. We are going to pay for it, obviously, in the future. We will pay for it.